Hey guys, I am Daisho and I am here bringing you a vlog and today I am actually going to talk about two different main topics. So the first one is going to be my, I guess I'll talk about the PTQ experience. So yesterday I played in a Magic Online PTQ and if you don't know what that is, it's a Pro Tour qualifier which is basically a pretty big tournament, it was actually really big yesterday, where you compete with everyone for a chance to go to the Pro Tour. So if you come in first place, then you get an invite to the Pro Tour. The thing is, I didn't travel to one, though it was a Magic Online one, and there were 530 people in it, so that would be pretty difficult for me to win. But I still, I mean, that's that's the reason why I entered. I, wasn't, I wouldn't have entered if I was just trying to play. I was definitely hoping that I would win. So unfortunately, I started out going 0-1, and, and when you have 530 people, it's not that easy to win when you start out going 0-1, but what I did realize is if that if I had won every single one of my next games, all 9, because there was 10 rounds, then I would make it into the top 8, and then once you make it into the top 8, you have a chance to compete for winning. So unfortunately, I won my next 6 rounds, but then lost the next one, so I was 6-2, and two, and then I finished it up 7-3. Uh, so I still I still managed to finish in 48th place, which was pretty awesome, I, I felt. I mean, it was my first really big Magic tournament, so I was very happy with that. Um, so while I was happy with the result, I definitely wasn't happy with how I played. There was a lot of situations where I know I made the wrong plays. It wasn't kind of situations where you made one strategy and maybe a different one could have been better. They were really things like playing the wrong land on the wrong turn so that I couldn't cast my spells. And it was just, some some of those plays were terrible. There was one when I was already 6-2 and two and I was playing to be 7-2. Uh, and two. And if I was 8-2, and two, then I may have been finished in top 16, or at least top 32. Um, I made I made just such a terrible, terrible misplay. I, I don't even want to talk about it, but it was so bad. And I, I don't know if it was just due to fatigue after playing so long. I mean, I wasn't actually tired. It was just... Uh, my mind was so used to playing that I just got over-focused, if that makes any sense. I don't know, I was not making uh, logical plays. But um, I still managed to go 7-3, and three, which I was pretty happy with. My pool was okay, it wasn't like I had two pack rats and Mizium orders and everything. Uh, I had a pretty decent pool, I ended up building a Grixis deck, and the best card in my deck was probably Teleportal. I also had a Desecration Demon, but it seemed that everybody always had an answer to that. They always had either a launch party, or I'd cast it late so they were able to just die Judgment it, or just like sacrifice one creature and then kill it so I guess even that's a two for one but either way uh, that was definitely a really good card and then the reason why I ended up building this deck is because I was able to build it Grixis which is really the thing that I like the most in this format I like being black red aggressive with cards like Teleportal so unfortunately I didn't have anything else like Teleportal I didn't have a Bluster Squall or any Pursuit of Flights or Traitor's Instincts or anything like that so that was definitely a little bit unfortunate but my deck was still really good. I had Nivix Guild Mage, or I'm not even discussing this right. I had Blood Fray Giant, I had Hell Hell Flailer, Double Is It Charm, Ultimate Price. Um, I just had a lot of good cards in the deck, and I think I built it pretty well. Um, the one thing that I was a little weak on was mana fixing. I did have two Is It Guild Gates, a Steam Vents, and a Blood Crypt, so I had a lot of those, but I still was only able to play seven black sources, seven red sources, and six blue sources. Um, I could have thrown, or actually 7-7 seven, seven, and 6 with blue being the 6, I could have thrown in a 7th blue source if I decided to play 18 lands and not play my Rogue's Passage, but I have wanted to play the Rogue's Passage since I had like a Tenement Crusher, a double spawn of Rick's Mahdi, um, as well as that Blood Fray Giant that I mentioned, and a Tenement, I said the Tenement Crusher. But anyway, so I had a lot of high power creatures that I just wanted to be able to punch through with a Rogue's Passage, and Rogue's Passage... I'm not really sure. I mean, sometimes it seems like it's the best card in your deck, and then other times it just seems like it's a wasted spot and you wish it was just a, a regular colored land. But um, the two main matches that I lost, I think the reasons why I lost were two mana fixing issues, which is reasonable, and maybe that was a uh, a reason why I should have gone either just blue, red, white, or, or just uh, green, white, which also would have been a pretty sweet deck. Um, I had uh, Grove of the Guardian, Wayfaring Temple, and a... Uh, a collective blessing. So, um, I mean, the deck didn't didn't curve out too well. It was really heavy on three, almost nothing at two. It was like a Concordia Pegasus and a Gate Cooper Vine at two, and nothing at one either. So it would have gotten off to a late start, and that's why I didn't really want to play it. I think, but um, it did definitely do some powerful things. And uh, anyway, but my point is that. When you're playing a 10-round tournament, you're going to get mana screwed sometimes. So you should, I mean, maybe a strategy is to just limit that as opposed and take some power out of your deck 
while also making it more consistent. So I knew that, that that might happen. I just had hoped that the Mana Screw games would get would not get bunched up together like they did. Um, the most frustrating part was that my opponent who beat me in round one ended up going one two drop. Like he just lost the next two rounds and then just stopped playing the event. So it's not like I ended up losing to the best player in the tournament or anything. But I mean, his deck was really good. It was really aggressive Rakdos, and he had ants. Like the first game that I played, I didn't get mana screwed. I just lost to his spells. I mean, he just played such really really good spells. And actually, I think I did lose to a mistake that I made in that game. And then the second game was not even a game. I didn't even get to play any spells. I mold and then uh, didn't play anything pretty much. But anyway. That that is the sad part. The awesome part was when I was going six and when I won six straight games, and I was actually like, "Oh my god, I actually might get there." But when you get to that point, when you are six and one, and you're playing against other six and one decks, then they're obviously all really good. And while I I think that my deck could definitely compete with those, um, for instance, the guy who beat me, uh, I got stuck on lands. I, I kept a hand with with a mountain and a blood crypt. And then uh, Frostburn Weird, as well as a Gorehouse Chainwalker. And then I had an Ultimate Price as well. So he played a pack right on turn two, and I'm just like, oh, thank God. And I had the I had the Ultimate Price for that, so that was pretty sweet. But, I mean, you don't... A lot of people... I'm sure a lot of people at that point in the, in the tournament still had pack rats or, or just other really, really powerful creatures and bombs and stuff. But one thing that I was surprised about is all, all day I didn't play against an Izzet deck. Um, I was the only one that had blue and red in there, and I think I saw pretty much every other combination. But eh, whatever. I mean, if if people aren't running is it yet, then that's that's not my problem. Although I think it's a lot weaker in sealed than it is in draft. In draft, you can kind of sculpt your deck while in sealed. You kind of just have to deal with what you're given with. Anyway, that is going to be, I guess, the end of my PTQ talk. I really enjoyed the experience. I'm definitely going to do it again. And, uh, oh yeah, I tried to record it, but my computer, this little guy over here... Um, yeah, it's kind of pathetic, so I wasn't able to do that. Um, it, it just shut off, and I almost actually lost the tournament. I had to reboot it in safe mode, and then luckily that was able to, and I still think I had like a minute left to spare, because I like once my computer shut off, I set a, uh, a timer on my phone, and I'm just like, okay, once this goes, because 10 minutes of inactivity and you lose. So once this goes to 10 minutes, then I'm just dead. And then I think I, I logged in with, like, two minutes left or something like that. But anyway, um, then later in the tournament, I had to switch over to my dad's computer, um, which during the tournament I installed Magic Online on, <laughs> and um, I finished it up from there. So I recorded, like, the first three rounds, and then the fourth round screwed up, and then I recorded the fifth round, but it had weird graphics because it was in safe mode, and then uh, from there on I didn't have any more. So I don't think I'm going to bother uploading it. I wanted to, but maybe I'll upload a video that's talking about my draft pool and... Uh, that might, or my sealed pool rather, that might be pretty interesting. But other than that, uh, I'm definitely going to do another one of these, if not a PTQ, um, a sealed tournament or something like that, and I'm going to record it. Um, but I'm going to wait until I get back to school where I can use my uh, desktop so I can bring my desktop home for vacation. So that won't be for a while, actually, because I'm not going back to school for another month at least. So I don't know why I'm telling you this. You're not going to get excited at all. Anyway, number two. Topic number two, so that was still part of topic number one, even though it was eight and a half minutes. So topic number two is the latest game that um, I wanted to upload. So that was match, uh, RTR Draft 5, match, uh, match 3, Game 3. So it was the Rakdos deck that was super aggressive and had all those one drops with the Civic Sabres. So the thing is, I, I recorded the, or I edited the video, and uh, all I had to do was record a commentary and upload it, but... Uh, it was during finals, so I was a little bit busy at that point, and uh, what I ended up doing is instead of uploading it, I just left it on my computer, and I, for some reason, didn't think to move the file over to my hard drive and then bring it over to this computer, but either way, I don't have that gameplay here, and I feel like it won't be too relevant in a month, so I'll just tell you what happened. Uh, my opponent played a Concordia Pegasus and an Ethereal Armor. And I couldn't really do anything after that. I didn't draw into any of my auger sprees or, I guess, street spasm couldn't even hit it. I think I had a street spasm in hand, but street spasm couldn't hit it. And I think I made a couple other weird, possibly terrible plays along the line. But basically, he just played that and then eventually played a Corsair's Accord and then just killed me. I mean, uh, that's that's that, that's the main problem with that deck. An Ethereal Armored Concordia Pegasus that's just staying back to block is going to wall off my entire team. 
Um, the only way I can beat that is, like, if I get a super large Niv Magus Elemental. I don't know. <laughs> but even then, he had, like, just Nine's Judgments and Avenging Arrows in his deck. So overall, in that draft, I lost to two Bat decks. And I think, well, I guess Golgari is probably also a bad matchup. But I think my deck would have matched up really, really well against other aggressive Rakdos decks. And maybe Celestia? Maybe not? I don't know. But decks that are playing Armory Guard, uh, Towering Indric, uh, Trestle Troll... Like, those kind of cards just destroyed that deck. So it definitely wasn't a good deck. It was a fun deck to play, and I'm really glad that I made it. I enjoyed the draft, and I enjoyed playing the games, especially the game that I won. That was that was really fun. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think I would recommend you trying to go mono Civic Saber 1 drops. If you want to draft a Civic Saber deck, draft the Vassal Soul Civic Saber deck, because nobody can deal with that. A 4-power flyer is just impossible to deal with in the format. I mean, the only way to deal with that is regenerate your Trestle Troll every turn. I mean, it'll trade with a Towering Indrik, I guess. Um, Aerial Predation does work against it. But even, <laughs> there was one time where I was playing against Golgari deck, my opponent sided in, like, two Aerial Predations, he had multiple Towering Indrix, Trust Trolls in his deck, and I still managed to beat him. I just had the, you mean, when you're drafting that deck, you want to prioritize, like, Inaction Injunction, uh, other Detained Spells, Azurius Arrestor, whatever, it still works really well in that deck. Uh, Fairy Imposter with Azurius Arrestor, and, or just this year, is really sweet. And, uh, did I say Dramatic Rescue? I, I meant to say Dramatic Rescue, and... Um, an action injunction, obviously Void Wielder also. Void Wielder is such a, such a sweet card. Um, oh, also, one thing that I did want to mention from my PTQ experience, the card that was the best in my deck was Teleportal. I won probably 12 games with that card, just half them were just exactly lethal, and then a bunch of the other ones were just, dist I mean, it was such a sweet card, and I don't know if it's just in sealed, I think it's a lot better in sealed than it is in draft, even though it's still amazing in draft, but when I saw the card, I was like, man, this is basically overrun, this card's gonna be awesome, and then I haven't played that much with it, because it isn't uncommon, but I think I'm just gonna, like, try, if I draft, if I draft, and I see a teleportal, I'm just gonna, like, take it no matter what, I don't I mean, that card is so good. Um, the other card that I was really happy with whenever I saw it was Asperia Skywatch, if I can cast an Asperia Skywatch, I was probably winning the game, because... Uh, I cast that card, and then I can get in for some more damage, and then, um, since my deck was pretty aggressive, it was already, my opponent was already down some life, and then I can just finish the game off with that Skywatch, or get a Rogue's Passage going on, but either way, the Skywatch was very important in a lot of my wins, it just completely changed the race, because it puts a 3 power, usually unblockable, onto the battlefield, as well as stopping them from attacking for a turn, so that was really awesome. Anyway, this has gone on long enough, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, and let me know if you, uh, yeah, let me know if you want me to post more videos like this in the future. I doubt you will, but if you do, let me know. Have a nice day. Bye.